Thanks, Kevin. It's terrific to talk to you and to uh, the wonderful audience that uh, you've uh, created. Well, for those listening, I'm a semi-retired primary care physician. I had the wonderful experience of working for several years for Consumer Reports and first ran into um, Kevin and some of you all during that period of time when I was very involved in safety issues. I also heard about this wonderful transparency called Open Notes in 2013. I volunteered for two years to try and uh, get organizations in Portland, Oregon, where I live, to implement it, and they did. And then in 2015, after I had returned from New York to Portland, I uh, went to work part-time for Beth Israel Deaconess to help Open Notes uh, get spread across the country. And so today, I'm going to be trying to explain to you what really this very simple but challenging idea uh, is and the experiences we've had. So I'm hoping to make you aware of this as clinicians, patients, but most of all, an advocate for patients because uh, this is a big culture change and patients can use all the help that they can get um, in order to get easy access to their notes. One of my mentors in Open Notes, Tom Del Banco, emphasizes this is like a drug. It's a wonderful drug. It has terrific benefits, as you'll see. But it's not for everybody. There are some risks, and it's important to hear about both. I think this is going to stimulate your thoughts about how this might change the culture, and I would underline culture. This is a cultural issue. Our healthcare culture tends to hide information from us, but the technology now makes it easy to share it, and it's time that we catch up in healthcare with that kind of technology. I hope it stimulates discussions about how you can use this in your community. Our major focus has been mostly on clinicians and health systems, trying to get them to really flip a few switches to make this happen. But we're expanding our focus to uh, patients. These are two wonderful patients. Melissa Salmi on the right actually works for us. Both of these individuals are folks in their 20s, 30s. They have serious medical condition. They both have uh, brain tumors and have been so far successfully treated. Both of them are very bright. And from the start of their illnesses, they have asserted to their clinicians, I want to have all the information I can get my hands on about my illness. I'm curious and I'm smart enough and motivated enough to figure it out. Give it to me and give it to me easily. Don't make me pay, work hard, etc. to get it. So what is Open Notes? Open Notes is a philanthropy funded initiative and let me un underline that. Many people think we're a business, that we're selling software or selling our consulting services. We're not a business. We're philanthropy funded. Our idea is that patients should have easy access to their notes via patient portals that 85% of health systems already have. This started with a research and demonstration project in 2010. That project involved more than 100 primary care doctors and 20,000 patients in Boston at Beth Israel, Geisinger in rural Pennsylvania, and Harborview in the inner city of Seattle. Notes were shared for one year. Doctors and patients were surveyed before and after. This analysis and survey has been replicated in multiple organizations, the VA, Cedar sinai Kaiser Southern California, Kaiser uh, Oregon. Repeatedly, organizations get the same results I'm going to share with you. Now, our initial research was focused on physical health doctors, but we're now doing other research to expand that to specialties. And so far, uh, again, our implementation data is consistent with the data that I'm going to share with you. Where are we at in terms of disseminating this? Well, we're very proud that more than 100 organizations, we're actually now up to 120, in 49 states have implemented open notes. Only Alabama has no private implementer. Almost 23 million people have access to their notes. We know of many organizations that have implemented open notes, and I suspect some of them are in Kentucky, but they have not yet been willing to talk to us about that for a variety of different reasons. In one state, Utah, 80% of patients who are in Utah now can see their notes. Isn't that incredible? 80% of Utah citizens can see their notes easily in patient portals. There are organizations that are sharing notes in Kentucky, and I especially 
I want to make sure you all know that the University of Kentucky, Bon Secours, and the VA are sharing notes, so they're part of the Open Notes movement. Now, their patients may or may not know that. If you're taken care of in any of those systems and you didn't know that you could get easy access to your notes, well, you can. And I'd love to help you figure out if it's working for you. This slide shows an advertisement, a promotion from Intermountain Healthcare announcing that notes were now available for patients to see. We were thrilled to see this because it's unusual actually to have health systems that will promote, advertise if you will, that notes are available. We've got to tell patients about these opportunities. So one of the first things that you should be prepared for when you talk about notes or use that term is many folks won't know what you're talking about. Well, notes are written by clinicians during and after an appointment. They're different from the after visit summary. They're more detailed uh, than the after visit summary. They're part of the medical record. They are shared with other clinicians as needed. Ideally, and this is the big issue for me, they contain details of how the clinician is thinking and planning. Many people don't know what they are or that they even exist. We've had some patients say, I didn't know that anybody was recording anything about that visit. Well, of course, they are, and it's a really key piece of the health information that enables folks to make decisions about our health care. So what did that research project show? Look at these results. Strong majorities of patients said they were taking better care of themselves when they read their notes. They understood better. They remembered better. They were better prepared. They were more in control of their care. That They did a better job of taking their medications as prescribed. All things that clinicians love to hear. In fact, repeatedly, repeatedly, 99% of patients, once they know what you're talking about, say they want the option to see their notes. They might not look at them tomorrow or even next week or next month or next year, but they want that option. And that 99% result has also been replicated multiple times. In fact, I challenge many of the audiences, is there anybody in the audience that doesn't want to see their own notes or see their elderly parents' notes? Very rare for anybody to ever uh, raise their hand and say they don't. Why do patients read notes? They want to know. They want to understand. They're curious. We have the right to be curious. They want to know what their doctor was thinking. They want to be able to remember. And... Here's where this is very relevant to your other work. They want to check that the notes are right. And we're going to talk about errors because, not surprisingly, who's best at finding errors in their notes? Patients are. Now, what are the concerns that clinicians have? They're worried that they're going to have to work harder. And these days, that's a challenge. There are problems with many clinicians feeling they're burned out. They're frustrated. The health systems uh, may not be taking care of uh, their clinicians as well as they should be. Well, our research shows when it comes to workload, some of their concerns are appropriate, especially documenting their notes. A minority, and let me emphasize minority, a minority of clinicians need to correct what most folks think are bad habits. They use acronyms. You know, SOB does not mean the same thing to clinicians as it does to patients. And you'd be surprised how SOB in a note can look like it's not a medical term. A pejorative. Patients don't like to be described as non-compliant. You can just as easily say the patient reported they haven't been able to take their medicines as we've discussed. And copy and paste, which means you copy a big body of text in another note and bring it over to your note is very confusing to them. Now, clinicians are worried that patients aren't going to understand what I'm writing. That's not true. 85 to 90 percent of patients say they can read and understand the note as is. Are they perfect? Far, far, far from it. But they can get important information. There are 8 to 10% of folks who read their note and they're confused or they're worried. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's a good thing. 
I try to tell doctors, you were confused about calculus, weren't you? You know, when you're ignorant and somebody tries to teach you, usually you're confused for a period of time. Confusion is better than ignorance because confusion leads to knowledge. So I don't see that as a negative, but some of my colleagues do. Here's some tips about how to write better notes that patients will more easily understand. I won't go through these in detail. There's a couple of nice papers about what clinicians need to do to adjust to this era of more transparency. What other concerns do they have? They're worried that patients reading their notes means they're going to spend more time during and after the visit. That is not supported by either research or reports from our implementers. They're worried their email volume is going to go way up. That's not supported by research. In fact, there's some suggestion that by patients seeing their notes, some of them don't have to email. So it may actually, in some situations, decrease email uh, traffic. They worry, oh, I'm going to be overwhelmed by requests to change my notes. Patients do see errors. The frequency depends on whether they're asked to report those errors. When they see errors and uh, they're able to report them and something's done about them, what happens? They trust their doctors more. The most frequent errors are related to drugs. Patients find more errors, actually, than clinicians. So the administrative burden of this can be a worry, but it turns out that even as good as patients are at finding errors, it does not overwhelm uh, the administrative systems in ambulatory practices. Remember this rule. Two eyes on one chart are better than two eyes on a thousand charts. As a practicing physician, there was no way that I could uh, monitor all of my notes and pick up all the errors. As a patient, I've now picked up two, three errors, including a wrong-sided error. So this is a positive in terms of safety. This is just a slide illustrating kind of the distribution of different types of errors. Again, I won't go into detail on uh, this one. You can see drugs is the most common, followed by past medical history, etc. What other concerns do clinicians have? We do think there's a subset of clinicians who may upcode. In other words, they say they talked to you about something or they examined a part of you and they actually didn't. They're able to bill at a higher level for this. Most of the time, those clinicians aren't going to stand up in a meeting and say, gee, I uh, am against open notes because I won't be able to upcode. Many of them say, oh, this is just uh, one more thing. I'm already burned out. You're asking me to do more than I can possibly do. Interestingly enough, those 120 implementations of open notes, not a single one has reported any significant number of clinicians were overwhelmed by additional work as a result of open notes. There is also a subset of clinicians that will get pretty paternalistic and express concern that the notes really aren't the patients, but they're the clinician. And they're worried that patients won't be responsible with their notes and their privacy will be compromised. Our response is, gosh, let's not talk about a world where the one person who has the most difficulty seeing a note is the patient themselves. Sure, this is one of the risks. Patients uh, may share their note. In fact, the uh, evidence is 20% of patients do share their notes with family members, caretakers, etc. Some physicians will say, well, gee, they're going to see content in my note that might suggest that I'm worried they're manipulating or not telling me the truth. Well, you have to be more nuanced. You have to be more careful. Some will say, oh, I don't think this is going to be that valuable. Well, Remember, 99% of patients want easy access to notes. They disagree with that value statement. I include this slide because of that statement just to the right of the 99% circle. Look who most benefits by reading their notes. Older, non-Caucasian patients with poor health and lower formal education were more likely to feel better about the doctor who shared notes with them. So the very patients who we all know need to trust us more, need to be more engaged, need to be willing to listen to what we're talking about and remember it, just sharing that note really helps them.
So what happens in practice? This can get pretty complicated, so I'll try to simplify it. Most organizations face a decision that goes something like this. They can basically structure things so that the default is to share all notes, but enable clinicians to hide any individual note. We think that's the optimal way uh, to do it. The other option is, well, the default is we won't share any notes, but if a doctor wants to click on a button, they can share an individual note. You know what happens. If the default is to share all notes, almost all notes get shared. If the default is to hide all notes, almost all notes get hidden. So while defaulting to hide all notes initially and share on an individual basis can be an interim step, we really, really discourage organizations from pursuing that for any significant length of time. I'm sad to say that most mental health notes are not shared in most organizations. Only 30% of implementers include mental health notes, so we've got another gap going here. When we ask mental health patients do they want to see their notes, 99% of them say yes. It builds trust. It's another opportunity, actually, for therapy. Another controversial area is only a little more than half of pediatric implementers include adolescent notes. This is a cultural issue. Some organizations want adolescents to be able to see all the information. Others are very worried, especially the easier you make the access, the more likely parents are going to see their notes, and they want to discourage that. There are state laws about those issues. Finally, the other interesting group is about 20 to 30 percent of patients, as I mentioned earlier, will share notes with proxy or caretaker folks. Almost all of that incurs informally. The formal proxy access rates in most organizations are 1 to 2 percent. So people are going to do what they need to do to get someone to help translate the note, explain it to them, etc. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Retroactive access to notes is rare. There's only three organizations in the United States who go to prior years and provide easy access. The EHR systems can invite or remind folks to read notes. That increases reading rates. About 20% of organizations are releasing inpatient notes. We actually have no research about that, so we only have anecdotal uh, information. We do think it's very important that on an individual basis, some patients and some notes should be hidden. No one would argue that notes about domestic violence or child abuse should be easily available. We've really urged health systems to publicize the easy access of notes to patients. It's really critical. We run into so many folks. I mean, I'll be interested in your experience the next time you run into somebody who is taken care of at the University of Kentucky. Ask them. Have you uh, looked at your notes on the patient portal? There's a good chance they'll look at you like either what are notes or I didn't know I could do that. Well, they can do that, but it may be nobody's ever told them or nobody's ever showed them how to do it. And this latter issue, ease of use on the patient portal, we've now learned is quite critical. If that button that says clinical notes is easily seen and available at Mayo. It is right on the portal page. What do you think is the button most clicked on that portal page? It's the notes button. Mayo has shared more than one million notes. One million notes. The most uh, popular vendor these days is Epic. They have really been a big supporter of uh, open notes, but unfortunately their current configuration makes it very difficult for patients to find notes. Patients have to kind of figure out how to do three clicks in a row that are correct and voila, their note appears. And that doesn't happen very often, so we're hoping that Epic will fix that soon. So, I mean, let me wrap up by just saying, if you think about it, what's going on here is a new world is emerging here. Notes are not just administrative work. Realize the electronic health record systems are really oriented to enable clinicians to write notes that lead to better reimbursement, that satisfy reimbursement criteria. Well, when you start to see the data that we're seeing, 
you can see that they're a crucial part of the clinician-patient relationship. And we need to go back to the days of early in my practice, 20, 30 years ago, when we wrote notes because we wanted other clinicians to understand what was going on. And we knew patients were going to read our notes, and we wanted them to understand. At Mayo, they really call this connected care. They have a center for connected care. And whether it's labs, imaging, emails, they're trying to maximize the impact of asynchronous communication. It's more and more about all kinds of information and communication, not just face-to-face. -face. Now, we also, I think, in many clinicians, I will try to look them in the eyes and say, listen, I practiced for 20 plus years. I had trouble remembering what happened the next day, but I had notes. You want your patients to remember what you talked about and what to do give them their notes. They're easily available, it's free, it's portable, it's convenient. We have incredible numbers of anecdotes now from patients traveling all over the world who get in trouble and are able to really improve their health care by easily getting to their notes, sharing it with the surgeon in Singapore who's trying to understand what's wrong with them and, and what he needs to be cautious of. So my end uh, plea is join us. Join the Open Notes movement. Go to our website. Look at the resources we've got. If you're involved in a health system, ask them to share their notes. Ask them why they aren't sharing their notes. Ask them to communicate about sharing notes. Ask them to make the access of information for patients equal to the access of information for clinicians. I'll stop there and answer any questions.